Well, <clears throat> listen, um, I've said this numerous times that uh, I was fortunate enough, but when I met my idol that uh, he was bigger and better and even nicer than I could ever imagine in my own mind as a kid. Uh, he was really a unique man in that, you know, it didn't matter who you were or where you were from, he was comfortable talking to anyone and people were comfortable talking to Gordy. Um, as I always said, you know, he was the greatest hockey player I ever lived and happened to be the nicest man that I've ever met. And there's not too many people that say anything wrong or bad about Gordy Howe. He just, he's a genuine man. I was telling uh, his son today, if you look at pictures of Gordy, uh, or remember Gordy at hockey games, Gordy never sat in a box or in a suite. He always sat in the, with all the fans. And he understood who he was. And, didn't bother him to take pictures and sign autographs and be part of society in that way. He was very humble. Why have we lost that in sports? Well, life changes, you know. It's it's like parenting. You know, the way my parents parented me is different than the way that I parent my kids today. It's just life changes. And I said recently that one of the things Gordy did was sort of like Republicans and Democrats reaching across the aisle to talk to each other. Gordy was friends with Joe Falls and a guy like Frank Orr, Stan Fischler in New York, and Red Fisher in, in uh, Montreal, and Dick Irvin. He fished with those guys. He hung out. He understood their responsibility and what they brought to the table as far as connecting the athletes and the fans. And uh, it's different today. We, we just don't have that like we used to have that. When, you, when he handed the... Oh, yeah. He's endless. They all have those memories. Do you have that iconic picture of hmm? Standing there with Gordy Howe, just when you look back on moments like that, just talk oh my to gosh. You, for somebody like yourself, what it means to have uh, I, I was, listen, <clears throat> I was really lucky. Um, you know, not everybody gets to meet their hero or their idol. And sometimes when you meet them, it wasn't as good as you thought it was going to be. And man, I, I, I got so lucky that the guy I chose happened to be so special. And over time, not only did we become uh, a mentor to me, but we became friends. Um, and our families became friends, you know. We played hockey with his youngest son, spent a lot of time together traveling. We did charity events together. Um, I don't know if I ever met a person in life that was never not bothered by it. So if you went up to him and started talking hockey, he, he loved it. Or if you went over to him and started talking about a baseball game or a baseball team, he, he loved it. I remember walking through the airport with him when I was 18 years old, and every single person, I think, in the airport knew and recognized him. And he stood and took pictures with everybody, signed his name. He never, he never thought that um, it was a, it was a uh, sort of a, a burden he just thought it was part of his life. He was Gordy Howe, and he understood it, and probably understood who he was better than anybody. Very humble. What you were you missing in perspective of what he accomplished? Oh, on the my ice. God. He, the, the, yeah. the numbers sometimes are a little bit like video games for Frank. Well, listen, um, I was saying this the other day that I, I, in a lot of ways when I was breaking his record at 1851, I was embarrassed by it because, you know, <clears throat> as kids we all... You know, you, you sort of have dreams and ambitions and you have goals that we all set for ourselves. I never anticipated getting the numbers that Gordy got to. and uh, But I was the first one to recognize it was a different game. I mean, they only had six teams and, you know, it was probably a lot more defensive-minded and the checking was tighter. And it was a 70-game schedule, not 80-game schedule. So I understood all that. So in a lot of ways, I was embarrassed that I was chasing down his record. And my dad pulled me aside and he said, you know, the greatest part of this whole uh, experience for you is not breaking the record but how genuinely happy Gordy Howe is for you and that's the way you got to be when somebody comes along to break your records and that's the one thing I took from it that when I broke the record he it was like he broke the record himself he was genuinely happy for me and that, that made me feel really good I mean, was there something that first year in when you were playing for the great church in yep. Edmonton, in, for New England WHA mm -hmm. would you ever skate around a week and then 
Gordy yeah. Or yeah, you know, <clears throat> so I got to play my first game against Gordy. I was 17, and I was so nervous, uh, you know, to actually be on the ice with him and play against him. He was winking at me the whole warm-up, and I thought, wow, this is pretty cool. Gordy Howe, he's winking at me. <laughs> um, I took the puck from him about the second or third shift, and all of a sudden I got a whack on the thumb. I thought I broke my thumb. And uh, he said, don't ever take the puck from me again. <laughs> okay. Um, so in the locker room, I, we had an old goaltender named Gary Smith that was our goalie. And I said, Gary, I don't know what just happened. And I said, you know, Gordy was winking at me the whole warm-up, and he tried to break my thumb. He's like, winking at you? He's not winking at you. He's got a bad blinking problem. <laughs> I said, well, why didn't somebody tell me? <laughs> I thought he was wishing me good luck. <laughs> you've so. talked about trying to be like him, I mean, mm -hmm. from your number and everything. Uh, mm -hmm. And you've also talked maybe about the winged wheel. I mean, how close did you come to wanting to completely be like him and play for this organization? And oh, yeah. Listen, I made no secret of it that my childhood dream was to play for the Red Wings. Um, somehow in my mind, I figured I could wear number nine, but obviously that's not possible. You, Nobody's ever going to wear his number, but I even tried to go to get my haircut and ask for a Gordie Howe haircut when I was nine years old. So everything I did was to be a Red Wing and to be uh, around Gordie Howe and be part of Gordie Howe's world. He was just That was all I dreamed about as a youngster. I used to talk about this all the time. Still to this day, that my favorite Christmas ever was getting a Red Wing number nine jersey when I was five years old. It's still the best Christmas present I ever got. What was, what was people going here your were head saying that when, when you're coming to the rink this morning. Oh. Um, you know that. First of all, hockey's not going to be the same. The world's not going to be the same without Cordy. Um, somebody said it best this morning that um, Bellavo, Rocket, Cordy, they were the three people that probably could change the hockey rink into a cathedral and when you walk in it's more like a church today um, it's really special um, listen um, it's a hard day for his family it's a tough time for the hockey world um, on the other side of things it's a celebration too we, you know he, he did a lot of great things for a lot of people and I, as I was coming in here I was thinking about all the joy that he gave everyone I talked about uh, the 1980 All-Star Game that was here at Joe Lewis, and I was lucky enough to be part of that. And I half-kiddingly was saying that had they not started the national anthem, I think people would still be cheering today because the ovation just went on forever. And it was so uh, overwhelming and so overpowering. It was so uh, exciting to be part of that whole day. Um, and he almost scored in the game. He got an assist, but it was so nice and fitting that Scotty Bowman was kind enough, and he played him, and he played him a lot that game. I, I watched the tape of it recently. I was like, my goodness, Cordy played a lot for a 50-year-old. <laughs> uh, but <clears throat> he just, listen, we replace athletes. You know, over time, you know, in the 10 years, another athlete comes along, another great hockey player comes along. But you don't replace iconic people, and Gordy was a special man, and you don't replace that. We might be able to have new hockey players, but we don't replace a person of his caliber. What, what, what were you talking to? Talk to your grandchildren mm -hmm. about Gordy. What's the one thing you want to impress to them about him? Well, how nice he was to people. You know, listen, it goes without saying that he's the greatest player who ever lived. In my mind, it'll always be that way. But more importantly, he's the nicest person, and I mean that sincerely. I've met a lot of really nice people out there. Um, he just was genuinely a nice man that had a big heart and that's what uh, the one piece of advice I would give my kids and my grandchildren um, my, my older kids met Gordy a little bit they didn't know him overly well they knew him a little bit um, my kids don't know a lot about hockey growing up we're you know we sort of a house that was more baseball and basketball and football um, sort of when we were at home and when Gordy passed on Friday both my older kids and my all called me uh, at five in the morning you know, and they were you know genuinely shaken up by the fact of his passing so he was a big impact not only to me but to my family to my mom and dad um, 
I said, the two guys I won't go to dinner with are my dad and Gordy Howe. Everybody knows who they are. <laughs> <laughs> and, they look, and they like to talk to everybody, too. So you never get a chance to meet them. <laughs> um, <laughs> so um, Gordy was just as good to my dad as he was to me. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Be part of the uh, procession. It was one of the great honors of my life. Um, you know, he was, uh, as I said, he was everything to me. You know, he was like a second father. He was a mentor. Um, we played golf together. We did commercials together. Um, we had a we had a, a lot of time for each other, um, doing things together. Now, had we played a lot against each other in the 60s, we probably would have battled each other to the end. Um, but I was lucky enough to be part of it today. It was uh, something I'll never forget. What were you, what what were you, miss, what were you miss about him? His politeness. I mean, Gordy was the politest man. He had, and <clears throat> I was teasing the other day, but if you ever look at a Gordy House signature, you can read it, every one of them. You know, you, you see half these kids now, I don't even know what it says. <laughs> um, and Gordy Howe and Bobby Hall and Bobby Orr, they always, you could read their signature and they always took the time to make sure you could read the signature. So years from now, a kid would say, oh, I got this from Bobby Orr or Bobby Hall or Gordy Howe. You could read it. So his politeness to people is never, that, that's unwavering. How about you, the impact that goes deeper than hockey? I mean, even like when the Tigers were at the Yankees, they, they had a moment of silence for him. Oh. Yeah. Something about your sporting guy. And well, unfortunately, the world lost two two iconic people in the last seven days: Muhammad Ali and Gordy Howe. And two completely different personalities, and yet both very similar in that they were caring and nurturing and loving to everyone. Um, and that's what Gordy Howe was. I, I mean, Gordy Howe, in a lot of ways, made hockey popular in the United States. Uh, up until the 40s and 50s, it was basically looked upon as sort of Montreal, Toronto, the West, Alberta, British Columbia. Gordy Howe coming to Detroit really changed sort of the landscape of hockey itself in the United States. He was the first guy, and then Bobby Orr came along, obviously in Boston, but Gordy Howe was the first guy to sort of pave that road. Yeah, but you going to Los Angeles also oh, strengthened that. Yeah, but did, Gordy already had of, well, yeah, 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 Gordy already had that road paved. I just. As my dad would say, you just had to hop on the bike and the pedals would move. <laughs> a, a lot of people, a lot of people talk about now that Gordy has passed, what the NHL should do to remember him. Mm -hmm. You have your number 99 retired throughout mm -hmm. the league. Do you think Gordy is number nine? I know Rocky mm -hmm. Richard more too, but do you think that would be well, something the NHL should do? Uh, you know, I'm pretty biased. Um, if, uh, if I had my way, I would do it, but that's for the league. I'm not involved with the league right now, but you know, I'm sure. Listen, whatever they choose to do is going to be very special. Uh, because Gordy deserves something really special and unique. Uh, I don't think anybody helped promote the game, the sport, or our country um, better than Gordy Howe. He's proud to be a Canadian. He was proud of being from Saskatchewan. Um, and I don't think that uh, uh, the NHL is going to overlook the fact that how important he was to the game. So I'm sure they're going to do something real special for him. Dean, is there a story you've heard? Gordy that you didn't know previously that it stood out? No, well, I've heard a lot of yeah. them, you know. <laughs> I was telling the guys the other day when I was 17, I went to New York with Gordy and Bobby Hall. Tried to play.